never know what people have been through in their life. You know, what they're going through on a day-to-day -day basis. All you can do is keep pushing them and be there for them when they need it. I mean, we talk about that all the time as a team. When so-and-so is having a bad day, come on, try to lift them up, try to do something, because man, there's a, there's a lot. The good part of tennis is it's something that brings me confidence. It's an outlet for me. It's something that's fun. It's something that I've been able to travel a lot for tennis. I've been able to meet a lot of people with tennis, and that's just been really great. However, there's some negative things that come along with it, you know, bad memories from childhood. At the same time, it helps my mental health a lot. Like, it's that outlet, it's, it's fun for me. It's when I have a, have a bad day, I come out and just takes all the stress away. So it has its ups and downs. There's very key memories I have with my dad. He was a great guy and my mom has kept around just the best memories of him. He really liked jelly beans. My mom told me I could have a few jelly beans and he said a few went from three to 15 and a half. That's, you know, I live by that. <laughs> My dad died when I was five. He committed suicide. When I was diagnosed with bipolar when I was 11, that's when they decided to tell me because they knew that I knew my dad was bipolar and he died. So I guess they didn't want me to think as like a kid that I had bipolar so I was gonna die. So they decided to tell me like he was just depressed and he killed himself and that's the reason. But it kind of made it more difficult for me because then I started getting suicidal thoughts kind of more because I thought like, oh, this is how my dad handled it and this is what he did and this is what's gonna happen to me. It kind of complicated things, but I was gonna find out eventually. I mean, I was getting older, but it was definitely difficult at the time when he did die and also at the time that I found out. My mom married my stepdad when I was six and a half. He was a tennis coach. He started coaching me right after they got married. Once she started playing on a daily basis, she absolutely loved it. She'd set her own alarm for like five in the morning and get up and go run around the neighborhood, take her laps, come in, make her own breakfast, and start her homeschooling, and then go off to practice then, and practice all day, and then come home and go to bed on time and start over again. Off the bat, just became a very abusive situation. If I were to miss or if I were to do something wrong, he would nail a ball at me or bring me up to the net and pinch me or take me into the bathroom and beat me. I stuck with it because I felt that I had to for one, but I did really love tennis and I was really good at it and so I wanted to keep doing it. But I don't remember a day coming home without bruises from the time I was seven to almost 14 every day. So it was difficult. I didn't like practicing and competing was even worse because I would go to tournaments and just be terrified to do anything wrong. And even the days that I would have my best practices, there were still times I would miss or, I mean, you can't go through practice without missing. The times I loved tennis the most was when I would go to the USTA or go to tournaments when he wasn't there and then I would have a lot of fun and be relaxed. But outside of that, it was scary all the time. When I was nine or 10, he started sexually abusing me. That happened multiple times a day, every day. When I got to like 12 or 13 and I started to really understand something was wrong, I just felt so much guilt and shame. He would tell me that if I told anyone, no one would ever look at me the same. I was being mentally abused, physically abused, sexually abused, and it was just a terrible, terrible situation, and I wanted to die <laughs> a lot of the time. It was a huge conflict, but I always kind of knew it wasn't the game of tennis that was bad. It was him, so I didn't want to give up tennis because I knew I loved it. I finally went to a tournament with my mom. I've told her in the middle of the night because 
I was having a lot of suicidal thoughts. I was really scared. For years, she felt like she couldn't tell anyone. I can't imagine the fear of not knowing what was really going to happen. When she shared her secret with me, that demonstrated the greatest courage possible. She called 911. Child services came the next morning. I was at a tournament, so they came before my match. Talked to me about it, and I told them my story. They let me go play my match. I actually won the tournament. <laughs> Then it went on into a court case that lasted a while, but I had to go up and testify in front of him. I don't know how I did it, but I did, and he ended up getting 50 years in prison. It was the year before the trial actually happened, so I think that was good because then she was able to talk to me. She strengthened her mind, kind of like she strengthens her body as a tennis player. And then she went in there and she had the same determination that she demonstrates on the tennis court. She looked at that person who controlled her for almost eight years. She looked him in the eye and she answered the questions truthfully, which to me is pretty remarkable for that little girl. Kind of felt guilty actually at first because I felt that 50 years was a long time, but at the same time, like I wasn't the one that gave him 50 years. All I did was go up and tell the truth. Everyone in the area kind of knew what was happening. The tennis world is small. There was this group of boys that they would bully me about it to the point where I had to delete all of my social media for a couple years and just get away from it. It was a combination of everything. It was everything I was going through with my stepdad and the court case and my mental health was not good. It's not that I wanted to die, it was just I was in a really bad state with mental health. So I took two bottles of prescription medication. My mom came in 30 seconds after I did it to come ask me if I wanted to watch a TV show with her. Otherwise she wouldn't have because I was about to go to bed. And thankfully the hospital was four minutes away. Everything took its toll, and it was a moment of weakness. You learn to move on from it and realize that that's the problem of those people and not your problem. My heart burst with pride, but even more, it burst with joy because she's finally happy. She uh, was homeschooled, and so it was pretty amazing that she was accepted to Dartmouth. She did a double major, so that you know, it was no easy feat for her. Because of COVID, she got two more years of eligibility. She went from Dartmouth to Michigan State Tennis and fell in love with the coach and the team. I think she made a great choice because I, th I think she's in a very good place right now. I coached at Dartmouth. That was actually where I began my career. And her coach there was my first mentor. She was spoken unbelievably highly of coming in here and she's definitely lived up to it since she's been here. The problem with physical and sexual and mental abuse and bullying is that you feel really guilty and really shameful. I had to go through therapy and just realize that it's not my fault in any way. If you don't have people in your life that understand mental illness and a trauma, then it makes your life actually unbearable. It's really important that people in roles of leadership really need to be educated and so that they're more empathetic to things that Nicole's had to go through. The main thing is just to support her and do what we can. I mean, she's overcome so much. It's, it's great to see her happy and in a place where I feel like she's finally becoming super whole. Things do get better. Things get a lot better and you can be happy and you can be normal. I've definitely been doing really good the past few years. I am through it now. It wasn't easy sharing the story and I thought about it a lot. I felt that it could help a lot of people. You are not defined by what happens to you. You're defined by how you react to it and the things that you overcome. 
truly nothing bad lasts forever. Stay positive, stay optimistic, even when it's so hard to do that. And just know that it'll get better and you can live a wonderful life.